Okay, so this video here is just going to explain some of the basics of our oscilloscope. Uh, the oscilloscope is a very useful tool for uh, taking measurements. And all oscilloscopes are somewhat similar. Uh, it's just a matter of how much functionality they have uh, as far as advanced features and how many channels and things like their bandwidth. Um, you can see here, ours is a two-channel, 50 megahertz uh, bandwidth. Uh, two-channel means that you can look at two signals at the same time. 50 megahertz uh, bandwidth uh, gives you an idea of what's the highest frequency signal um, that you can display on the uh, oscilloscope. Um, and then there's other things over here. Now, again, depending on the complexity, there might be more features with some advanced measurement tools and techniques. Some oscilloscopes have a lot of built-in um, very sophisticated measurement uh, techniques already kind of built in for it. Um, but there's a couple things here. Vertical um, is going to control basically your vertical, your uh, up and down axis. And also there's a button here that these are all kind of turn knobs to control the scale, um, turning uh, things um, on and off. You have the different channels. And then this horizontal position, of course, as the idea moves left and right. Um, you can also do a scale because um, the scale depends on what kind of frequency of signal you're going to be looking at. And then the trigger is basically how, how does this device actually capture the signal that you're trying to measure. There's uh, several different triggering mechanisms and um, also ways to change quote what's called the level of triggering. Um, and there, those are those are some things that we probably won't look at too much into this course, but we will be playing that in other courses. And then the other major thing, of course, with this is you, uh, your kit should have come with two probes here. So you know the one end is a BNC connector, uh, and then the other end is uh, kind of an alligator clip here. This this little wire is always attached. Um, well, typically, it's all, almost always attached to ground. Sometimes you use it uh, as a reference, so you don't actually attach it to ground. But uh, for most of everything we're going to be doing, we'd be attaching it to ground. You have to be careful if you don't attach this to ground um, and you create a short to like power supply or something, you can not only damage the probe, but you can damage the entire scope. Um, so that's why we're going to follow the practice of attaching this to ground. Uh, and then this is just basically, you pull it down and there's a little hook here that you can uh, hook um, things on. Now I typically, and I'll show this in another video, I don't typically hook this onto components. I typically put a wire um, t attached to the component I want to measure and then just hook this onto the wire. Um, the other kind of neat thing here when you're maybe starting to probe some circuit boards with this is you can actually pull this top off and there's just a little probe here that you can uh, use. So you can still be clipped into a ground and then just kind of touch different points on a circuit board. Um, so, but we were going to be using it with it doing turned in. Now there's two of them, of course, that you come here. There's not a need to attach the color rings. Um, you're, you'll probably notice it came with the color rings. I, attach to, I like to attach color rings just because, you know, there's different colors for the actual channels. Um, when they actually, like, the image here will have two different colors as far as the actual display. And so it's nice being able to just say, okay, well, I can look at um, this side of the blow and I, uh, probe, and I know that this is going to be the blue signal on my oscilloscope. And for some reason, I didn't notice that it was yellow when I attached uh, pink for my other probe, which, not the end of the world, but I attached pink for the other side here. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and just get these probes, what are considered uh, calibrated or compensated, first. And then we will talk about actually doing some measurements with this. And we'll, we'll use our function generator, our audio generator, to do measurements first. A and then we'll look at a video where we have these connected up to an actual circuit on a, circuit bo on a breadboard. So the power for this, of course, is in top left there, and so it just powers it up, and doesn't take long for this one to, to uh, boot up. Some oscilloscopes, depending on their complexity, can take actually a minute or so for them to power on. Now, 
I've been playing around with this, so I don't know what the default state is if you've ever turned them on. They might have both channel 1 and channel 2 um, turned on. Um, but you can see here, um, basically, when I turn these on here, basically what I'm doing is I'm turning on or off whether they're being displayed. And so right now, channel 1 is being displayed. And this right here lets us move... Um, and it kind of hangs up in the middle here a tiny bit if you're moving this. This is basically wherever your zero volts is, your, your ground reference on the signal. So, you know, sometimes if you're measuring something that's primarily negative, you might want to have it up here. Or sometimes if you're putting two signals, for instance, on here, um, you might want to, for instance, you know, have one signal displayed on the top of the screen and one signal displayed on the bottom. Um, so there, there's different reasons why you might um, use that. Uh, actually, what the knob was I was just setting there was how, how dim or bright these are. Um, I was grabbing the wrong knob here. So I'm going to turn that one off and just go to channel one here. Oops. And put this back down to zero. Now. There's a couple things we should note here, first off, uh, and we'll talk about this in more detail in another course, but there are different type, many different types of probes, um, and these probes, a lot of these probes have two settings, and I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera here, um, but there's a little switch here um, that you can switch down and switch up. It's probably in the up position. There we, there we go, kind of a little bit. Um, it's got a 10x mark on it and then a, a 1x mark on it. And that has to deal with um, the attenuation that it does when reading the signal. And the short of it is, in order to read higher frequency signals, um, in order to have the probe being able to have a larger bandwidth as far as the signals that it can measure, you need to have attenuation associated with it. Uh, now for everything we're doing in the lab, we probably could get away with 1x. Um, but I like to make sure that we get in the habit of using 10x. So we want to make sure our probes are set to 10x. Um, now some probes um, are just 10x probes. You don't get a choice to setting them. There's even 100x probes and there's even some other like these are what are called passive probes because they only have re resistors and capacitors in them. But there's even like active probes. There's lots of different types of oscilloscope probes. But all those more advanced probes would be used with more advanced oscilloscopes than what we have here. So we have this set on 10x, but we have to make sure that the machine matches this setting here. So my probe is set for 10x, and when I turned my machine on, my default here was set at 1x, which of course um, is not what I, my probe is. So I need to make sure to set this probe by just hitting the menu, and then you just use this little cursor here um, to set for 10x. And then you can actually push this scroll button in as a button to enter it. So the scroll knob you can push in as a button. And so now I've set the probe at 10x. Now that's just channel 1. I'm going to have to do the same thing for channel 2 here in a second. So I'm doing channel 1 here. And now what we want to do is it's basically we want to call what is make sure that our probe is the compensation is um, adjusted properly. So I'm going to first plug this in with a the BNC connector there. And this signal, there's always going to be some kind of calibration signal on an oscilloscope um, for you to adjust uh, an internal capacitance for a, that are basically called a um, compensation capacitance. And if I look back at the probe here, uh, you can see there's a little screw there. That screw is what adjusts the capacitance. And then if you look in your little kit here that came with it, let me scooch some things aside here. There's also a little um, tool here. And this tool actually has got a little flathead screwdriver on one side. And it's specifically designed to be able to go in there and adjust that screw there so that you can adjust the capacitance in there. And let me show you why you want to do that here. So I'm going to adjust, put this here. So I'm going to attach the ground clip here to the ground and then I'm going to alligator clip into this signal right here. Now 
depending on your default settings on your probe, you might not even see anything right now on the screen. Now there are ways to manually set this so that we can get the image, but a good start on some of these sometimes is just to try and do an auto. Auto basically says it's going to try and have the probe um, capture the signal um, and see if it can see there. And basically there's different um, settings that you can have here, which we'll go into more detail. The multi-cycle is the one that you know we'll always typically use. Single cycle will literally just show you one period of the waveform, but you can always adjust that later on. Rising edges and falling edge have to do with how it triggers, and we'll talk about that later. So I'm just going to uh, hit the multi. That way it just goes away. But now, this is supposed to be a, a square wave. Um, so it's supposed to be kind of a nice horizontal, straight up, horizontal, straight down, horizontal, straight up. And that's clearly not what I have. Uh, and that's because my compensation capacitor isn't set correctly. So um, I'm going to take my little tool here, and I'm going to put it in here. And I have to, it's trying to get this into the screw here while I'm trying to film it. Okay, there we go. So I'm in there. Now I'm going, as you could probably see, it's starting to adjust here. I'm turning it very slowly. And what I'm doing is actually adjusting a capacitor inside there. And now you can see, oh, look, I've got this nice, pretty square wave. Now I can turn too far and also have it not be this nice, pretty square wave. So I can go back and set it to that. Now the, the key thing to remember is now, um, is that technically we only have to do this once, but what the recommendations are is that now we've compensated this, but this probe here, this now it's, it's pink, but it's, you know, as I said, maybe I'll put the yellow rings on after this video. Um, we should only use this in channel one because we might have to have different compensation settings for channel two. Oftentimes you're just fine um, I mean, these are being very strict details with most of what we're doing here. These aren't going to be big enough deal to, to worry about that. But those are some technicalities that you should worry about if you are going to be making fine, um, precise measurements um, for a company at some point. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. But now, of course, I want to put it in probe two. I don't want to adjust the compensation on channel one, I want to adjust on channel two. So I'll turn channel one off by just pressing it. Then I'll turn channel two on, and you can see it's all it's, it's this crazy looking thing right now. Um, and so um, if you want to turn this off, the coupling, um, well, first off, we should see here, the probe is set at one X. So I need to change this to a 10 X. And now this se setting should be saved once you change it once in the sense that if I turn the um, oscilloscope on and off, it will still be there at set at 10x. So it's not like you have to set it at 10x every single time, and we'll show that at the end of the video. So I'll connect it up here to do my compensation. And now you can see here, it's kind of already showing there, but again, I can, I can hit the auto for it to try an auto trigger. And now this one actually doesn't look too bad. Um, and yours might not look too bad. I purposely exaggerated the first one um, on the video. Um, so I'm going to go, and I'm just doing this off camera. I'm going to adjust it. Oops, wrong way. And so we have it adjusted there. Now, before we finish this video, because all I want to really do is talk about the compensation here and adjusting these probes here, let's look at a couple other things that we can see in this menus here and get used to it. So we said that the horizontal, you can see if I move this horizontal position, you can see even, hey, this is where ground is. That number two here on this screen, that arrow always points to where the ground is. And so, well, they put the ground down here because my signal is mostly positive, or it's in fact always positive. So we can move that up and down. But then you can also do something with the scale. Like if I turn it down, I can make the scale smaller now, when you make the scale, notice here it says channel is 2 volts. What that means is it's 2 volts per division. So you see how there's these dotted boxes here? So that would mean that, because I have this centered at 0 down here, this would be 0, 2 volts, 4 volts, 6 volts. 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. 
Now I can change the scale again and have it at one. And then again, if I just move it here, so this is now zero, one, two, three volts, four volts, negative one, negative two, negative three. So the vertical lets you change your y-axis scale and uh, change where the zero is. And then of course, this is 500 millivolts now, which is 0.5 volts, which again, if we put it here, this would just be 0 0.51, 1.52, 2.53 volts. Now, fortunately, a lot of the measurements we're gonna do on this, we don't actually have to try and take the reading from the screen. Um, we'll be able to have the machine take the reading uh, for us, which is nice. Uh, but we, it is always useful to be able to um, determine uh, this just by looking uh, at the screen and seeing that this is 500 volts per division. Now, the other thing I want to point out here is I'm going to turn channel 1 on again, even though there's nothing on it. These do not have to be on the same scales. So... I'm going to set this channel 1 for 2 volts. So right now, if you're looking at a yellow curve, if there was something on the yellow one, this would be 0, 2, 4, 6, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6 for channel 1. But channel 2, the 0 is down here, so this would still be 0, 0.5, 1, 1.52. So these channels operate independently as far as their y-axis scale. So it's, it's very critical, especially if you're trying to compare two signals. Sometimes you want these to be the same so that you can actually compare two signals. Other times you want them to be different because you want to be able to see both signals on the screen at the same time. All right, so let me turn that one off again and show you one other thing here. So the horizontal, again, we can see here, I can move this left and right, and this T being zero, that's, I mean, typically we don't necessarily want to worry too much about moving it left and right. Um, time being zero is kind of an arbitrary thing anyway. We can kind of say, well, whatever you want to make time being zero is time being zero. But I can definitely change the scale. So the scale is currently at 500 microseconds. So this would be zero, 500 microseconds, 1,000 microseconds or 1 millisecond, 1.5 milliseconds, 2 milliseconds, 2.5, so on. And then you could even say, okay, well, these are negative times, um, which I know doesn't necessarily make sense right off the top. Um, uh, just want to accidentally hit the button there. I didn't want to. Um, then if you adjust the scale, just like you can adjust the um, vertical scale, you can adjust the horizontal scale. And now instead of it being 500 microseconds, I'm not 200 microseconds. So this would be 0 0.2 milliseconds, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1 millisecond. And then you can go so that, you know, if you want to see just one cycle, you know, here this is going down and then up and then back down. So I'm really only displaying one cycle. I can see just one cycle being displayed. Or if I want to see you know, several cycles just to kind of be able to see the general idea of what this waveform looks like, I can scale it back out. Uh, so the last thing here before we move on uh, to looking at some signals here is there is this uh, little measure uh, button here, which we'll use quite a bit to take measurements. But I want to point out that you've got this USB storage here. And course that is the idea here that you know you can put in a USB uh, device uh, and it will take um, a second and you can see it just flashed up that USB was successfully installed so we can do storage here so what that does is it can let us save the waveform um, to this USB device so if I want to um, make a graph of it or plot it, um, I can do that. So what I can do here is I can say storage, and then I'm going to select the external, and um, there's this WFM file. Um, that file, um, I don't know what type of file that is. Um, the only one I've been able to uh, see here what is it yeah new file uh, 
What am I doing here? Files. Okay, that's what I forgot to do here. So if I go back to the storage menu here, storage, it's stored as a waveform. That waveform file is what the issue is. Now there's something that's called a bitmap here, which literally is just taking a, an image here. So we're going to look at that in a second here. And so I will, um, whoops, it went away because I didn't do anything with it. Waveform. I'm going to save this as a bitmap. Um, and then I'm going to do to external and then I'm going to do new file and now it will give like a name here and you can go through it's kind of annoying to actually you know set the name here for it but you can obviously set the name for it however you want to I'm obviously just doing some random letters here um, but I'll then save it and it saves it now to my Last drive. Now, what it literally did there was just a screen capture of the oscilloscope. Now, another option that you can do here, instead of doing a screen capture, is you can do a CSV file. And in the next video, I'll show you what these, the difference between these are. And so we'll do a CSV file as well. Um, and we'll save it to the external new file. And I'm just going to leave it as that name there. And so in your reports here, you'll be able to put images of the signals that you're measuring, and you can just save them directly to a USB drive. Um, some of the other things that you'll learn throughout your semester here is there's other things that are called data acquisition units, where instead of hooking this up through a USB, you can actually hook these into uh, an internet or into a, what's called a DAC system and actually have that DAC system hooked up to a computer so that you can actually hook up the measurements, but then it just directly saves it to a computer as opposed to having to transfer it between a USB. But we'll just do the transferring between USB. All right, so let's end this video for now.